I was not earlier than noon. Technically, it was 11.59 when he jumped in on my it clock. It wasn't. I'm just wasn't. letting you know. I'm saying on is... my, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that it was on my clock. That's all. Do we need to I'm not accusing clocks? you of anything. I'm not Your saying anything's wrong. wrong. I'm, I'm just, I'm simply stating it a was, fact. It was 11.59. Well, hold mm -hmm. on a second. Hello and welcome to another episode of the F Face Podcast. Eric, what number is this? Uh, this is 135. Episode 135, probably. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, Gavin Free and Andrew Panton. And uh, G Gavin, you were one minute early today. You've never been early in your life. Why did you decide to change things up? Uh, I wasn't early. I was. I joined exactly 12 o'clock. This sounds... Let's, I'll be honest. On, on my I'll class. be honest. You, yeah, you warned us about this. I think that this is some jet lag stuff for you. I think you're maybe a little... Ooh. Like, your time hasn't quite caught up. Oh. You know what solved this issue? Wrong. If we all had I an use, anal passage of time, sync up. Every week, <laughs> I use a perfectly synchronized what? GPS clock to what? join at exactly 12. This is, I don't know if it's the angle that this is taken out or whatever, but it's like giving me a headache to look at it. Like, yeah, it's because of the brightness. It's really hard to read. I can, oh, I can expose lower. Christ. But it, I literally, it, I wait until 11.59, and then I wait probably halfway through the next second, and then I click... So that as it turns to 12, I'm in the recording. And I do that every week. I was looking at the time on my computer waiting to see when it was going to start. And it was 11.59 when I heard you ding in. Yep, me too. Yeah. It was definitely close. I don't... Why would you buy that, that clock? I didn't what buy it. That? I built it. You built it? Remember. Okay. <laughs> why? Get a hobby. It looks like you stole it from the like world's a... shittiest scoreboard. Like it, it, I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> it's just a it GPS. It says eight 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 eight. All right, let me. Uh, I'm gonna. Get I mean, I respect that you made it, but this just that's the, yeah. It's the I angle. trust Certain this clock theory. even less now that I know you made it. That, that did not is help your case yeah. at all. No, it's a tough argument when the clock you made is wrong and arguing it's right. That's, that's I just difficult. put it together. I didn't like. <laughs> well, what do you mean? No. <laughs> well, all right. Come on Wait. now. What does that mean? It's like you a kit. It into the I wall? soldered it together. Okay. That's a little bit more hands-on than I expected. It would be like the way you phrased it would be like if you built a Lego set and said I invented this. The is thing is. <laughs> I, I, invent I invented Lego Hogwarts. <laughs> I, uh, you can't set it. It literally just has like an antenna for the GPS. And that's all that happens. Well, okay. This is the problem that you're overlooking. That room is dumb. We have weeks <laughs> of establishing that this room is stupid due to all the air. Your clock is dumb. It's like okay. that clock is breathing nothing but CO2, right? <laughs> that's very possible. I want to say that the second picture that you sent, great. You can read it perfectly. I agree. Yeah. Before it looked like the worst scoreboard. Now it's great. <laughs> I also want to say that with Gavin saying I built a clock and seeing this, it all makes sense to me and I get it. If this were flipped and Andrew was saying I built a clock, I don't know where this episode would go or what we would be doing, but time would just be like a construct. We would be like drilling down into like tenant style situations that would not be good. I don't think it would be tough to build. Well, what type of clock are we talking one like that's a apparently a cut by 10 seconds too fast. Yeah, I could do that. I could build a clock that incorrectly told time. No problem. I mean, Easy. look, look, here's what we could do. I can take a picture of the clock the second I press stop, right? Yeah. <laughs> we can take the length of the audio clip and deduct it from the current time to see when I joined. I checked out three words into the sentence. I don't care <laughs> nearly enough about whatever. Yeah, you do. I'm sure you're right. I'd rather just say you're right, and then we can move on. <laughs> Please do that, and then uh, explain it in some way that makes us not trust that you're right, and then we can move on. <laughs> okay. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to forget to do that. Oh, 100%. So, it sounded Gavin, complicated. How are you doing, buddy? You, text, you texted us all earlier and said you were going to be loopy from jet lag. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, jet lag, uh, so my body just decided that it was morning at about 4 a.m., so I've just been up for ages. Oh, what really? did you do from 4 a.m. until you would have normally gotten up? Were you Potted productive? About. Yeah. Did you get up, put clothes on, and, like, walk around the house, or did you just yeah. lay in bed? You did No, okay. I can't lay in bed. I hate that. That's just so boring. You're just wasting. What? <laughs> Are you serious? No, I, I, I hate being in bed. Get out of here. 
I spent last night just like I laid in bed for probably two hours last night. Oh just no way! It's like when it, when when evening's coming around, when it's getting to be about like eleven forty-five, I'm just annoyed that I've got to stop, <laughs> and I want it to skip to the you, next day. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. As soon as it turns dark, I start to feel like I'm ready for bed. I'm ready for bed by <laughs> six p.m. every day now because it's dark early in Texas. We we watched we, we we've been trying to watch like one Christmas thing a day, and mm-hmm. I was struggling, yawning through Home Alone last night. And as soon as it was over, <laughs> I was like, I got to go to fucking bed. I am exhausted <laughs> from another year's watching of Home Alone. Because it makes me laugh so goddamn much. And I looked at my clock. It was 7.48. And I was like, oh, fuck. I can't go to bed for at least another hour and 10 minutes. I've watched Home Alone with you before. And you would think that it's your favorite movie. (laughs) It is. It's up there, man. You know, I never considered it, but it does feel very much like a Jeff movie. It makes his love of the most recent one make more sense. Like, genre-wise, yeah. You got a guy doing pranks and mischievous. It feels very Jeff. There is nothing on earth funnier than when it becomes 9 p.m. Uh, on the night of the robbery and uh, Macaulay Culkin or, or Kevin McAllister gets, he just gets home from stopping by the church to pray before he unleashes hell on these two idiots. And then they pull up and they're like, it's nine o'clock, let's get to it. From that <laughs> second on until, honestly, until he cuts the cord on the zip lot line, that pe- that br- that like I don't know it's like eight minutes is like the funniest mm-hmm. eight or ten minutes of all time, <laughs> and I can't not laugh. His st- I was sp- I've seen that movie. I saw it in the theater five times in a row in five <laughs> days in high school because it was the year I turned sixteen. It was out, and I dr- I went every day to the dollar theater to see it. I've seen it a thousand times, but I laughed just as I was I was. Sp- I had spit coming out of my mouth. I was laughing so hard. I was drooling last night laughing so hard. <laughs> I'll be honest. That movie, soundtrack, absolutely slaps. Oh. It's an yeah, amazing it's soundtrack. How old were you when you watched Home Alone, Gavin? Uh, ooh. Do you remember? Like, do you watch it as like, a little kid or do you watch it later? Yeah, I must have been seven. Yeah, I feel especially lucky to have seen that movie uh, as a child because of the neighbor being genuinely scary. Like, watching mm. that as a, a little kid and being terrified by the guy that just is, like, clearing snow out of his driveway, I think adds to that experience. The, the What do they call him? The South Bend uh, Stalker? Or, yeah, or, something, or, like something like that. that. I haven't yeah. seen it in a long time. But but I just remember as a kid being genuinely terrified of that character, and I just don't think I would have had that experience if I watched it when I was older. Yeah, he's a pretty feeble old dude. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> Seeing it later in life, there's nothing really scary about him. It is very clearly like these kids creating this narrative. God, through the course of watching holiday movies, I uh, am trying to watch holiday programs uh, because Emily insists that we watch one piece of Christmas content a day. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it can be like a five minute Looney Tunes cartoon or what. It's like HBO Max has this has this like a a different present to unwrap each day, and it's like a different show. And then like Peacock has some different like you could go watch an episode of Alf Christmas or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, We watched. Uh, fucking what is it called spirited the other night that will ferrell uh what's the other dude that owns ryan the soccer reynolds? team ryan reynolds movie oh uh, the new one oh, my god that movie is long oh. and not super good it's a musical first of all which is fine they wanted to make a musical but there's no reason for it to be a musical there's no point neither of them are particularly good singers the songs aren't particularly funny if you cut the musical part out it would be an okay ninety-minute movie, but it is ugh, just drag. It's like a Wes Anderson movie where you like you think the movie's over, and they're like, "No, there's an entire other movie." I mean, is there a reason for any movie to be a musical? I think if you've got like some particularly interesting songs, and it can tell a story in a way that uh, that you that you wouldn't normally see it, sure, I think so. But I don't want to hear Will Ferrell sing. That's fair. He's not a Dina Menzel, you know. It's like it's different. <laughs> He's not Adele Nazim. Yeah. He's, not a Del- <laughs> he's not a Del Nazim. Freaking Travolta. Travolta. <laughs> yeah, like Willy Wonka. Should that have been a musical? I mean, it could be. I'm sure if you get somebody who's talented in that space, they can make that into a good musical. It was yeah. a musical. I'm saying, like, should it have been? Oh, it was? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> have you never seen Willy Wonka the Chunks Patrick? <laughs> well, no, I guess I just don't. Uh, yeah, I don't associate that as a musical. But you're right. There are what? definite. I, I just don't think of When I think of classic musicals, I don't think of Willy Wonka in that category. Uh. But you're not wrong. But I think it would have worked if instead of, like, whenever a kid got obliterated, if the Oompa Loompas just came out and just sort of mopped up the blood and left without a song, it would have been Isn't fine. Isn't that what the, the Tim movie. Burton movie is? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's the Tim Burton version, and that was terrible. <laughs> Once again, though, the Oompa Loompas, those songs were fucking awesome, and they add to the movie. 
Nothing Ryan Reynolds saying added to that. <laughs> what has been the best piece of Christmas content that you've consumed this year? Outside of uh, like established classics. What's a new Christmas? I'll tell you what. The, I Fuck, what's the, the best? I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of... Oh, you know what? It's not great. It's actually not very good at all. But uh, I this the the sequel to Christmas Story I watched that mm. with the Peter you know Peter Billingsley and it's uh it's it's rough for the first like thirty minutes but once you buy in it's got a lot of heart and charm and I'll say like I enjoyed it by the end of it I thought I I, I thought it was a pretty faithful sequel you can see how it goes how, uh, from a mile away obviously but it's just like a happy family Christmas movie right I thought they did a decent job. Uh, I thought they did a decent job of of adding on to that story without like beating you to death with it. What's their sequel to? A Christmas Story. Oh, what were you watching? <laughs> a Christmas Story what? 2. Oh, I, re- Christmas okay. story. I, I only heard Christmas <laughs> Story. I was like, Christmas Story's a sequel? Yeah, to a Christmas Story. <laughs> <laughs> what if there's just several Christmas stories that were unrelated? It's just like a title. Completely different movies? I think that movie, Christmas Story, I think it's... I'm going to get some hate for this. I think it's a dog shit film. That's a really? strong take. Yeah. yeah, I don't like it. I don't think it's a dog shit film, but I would be happy never to see it again, having had to watch it yeah. every Christmas my entire life. I mean, it definitely, like, the runs of it playing 24 hours a day on Christmas, like yeah. TV, like the way they promote it, definitely overplayed. Calling yeah. it a shit movie, I think, is strong. I mean, it's no Christmas vacation. Same, I, same, same boat for me. Seen it yeah. way too many really? fucking times. Also, from the moment he goes up into the attic and he starts watching <laughs> family films, the movie just grinds to a halt. If they, there's like, there's like a solid twenty two minutes they could cut out of this, like the five eighths, <laughs> five eighths of the way through that movie that they could just flush and get I, right back to cousin Eddie and it'd be good. That shot of his shins coming through the ceiling and landing on the, <laughs> as he lands on the bed, that might be the best shot in any movie. <laughs> I remember watching the first time seeing that the scene where he he's like putting up Christmas lights and he falls and he grabs the gutter and the gutter launches through the window. I it's maybe the hardest I had laughed in my life to that point. <laughs> I remember like going back and rewinding on VHS and watching in like slow mo, like frame by frame of the gutter flying out. <laughs> Great movie. <laughs> Has some amazing scenes. Have I ever told you guys a story about when I was in high school and I worked as a as a tool repairman for like the last year and a half I was in high school before I joined the army. No. And I, uh, I, this really sweet, uh, really sweet old dude who was like obsessed with Paul Harvey and he only had one arm and he was, uh, he was just like a really fucking badass dude who could do anything. He'd worked in the tool, like in the oil fields his entire life and had done all this with only one arm. And he opened up a tool repair shop and he would hire high school students and he tried to give me the business because he was trying to retire. And I was like, no offense, but I don't want to be a tool repairman for the rest of my life. And so I joined the army. Uh, but really lovely dude. And, uh, he would, uh, he taught me about productivity and about being efficient and working at all times. And like there was, if there weren't tools to fix, and I was a hydraulic, electronic, and a pneumatic tool repairman. So any kind of pneumatic drill, any kind of like electric bandsaw, any, uh, a lot of pumps, like a lot of pneumatic pumps for like tugboats and shit we would fix. And he was always kind of scraping by. And so whenever we would run out of stuff to do, he would tell me to get creative and come up with work. And one of his favorite things to have me do would be to pull nails out of old uh, lumber and then straighten the nails and then regrind points on the nails and then save them. So that we would have to oh God. like he was that he was that level of cheap. One time he came into work and he had he had like three 55 gallon or like five 50 gallon drums full of batteries that he had found in an industrial dumpster and he goes these might be bad they might, but we're gonna find out they were all like a cell like double a d cell <laughs> c cell and i spent like an entire saturday testing batteries to see which ones were good and which ones are bad like this is the kind of stuff he had me do all the time and so he would leave for a while and he would just say like find something productive to do and a lot of what i would do is i would fill i would find old broken like saw, like band saws or uh, like hammer drills, and I would try to rebuild them so he could sell them as used tools from like discarded pieces. And we were in this giant warehouse that was like 30 feet tall, I guess, maybe. I don't know. It was a tall ass warehouse. And he had built these out of recycled wood, which goes into this, I think, a little bit. He had built these um, shelves that were, went all the way to the top that were just covered in just whatever nonsense and you know, 
bullshit that he had accumulated and collected. And I would climb up there to look for like tool parts and stuff. And there was one that he had that was suspended from the ceiling by chains. And it was just like, it was like a, like a wooden flat that was suspended by chains from the ceiling, just hanging loose. And you had to like climb up on this one really tall shelf to jump over to it. And there was like some kind of something up there that I saw that I thought I could fuck with. And so I went up there to get it. And then I, I liked being up there because you could like kind of swing on it and it felt dangerous as fuck because you're like 25 feet in the air swinging on some <laughs> fucking rotten wood. And uh, and I got up there and then I realized that I was having that it was a little scary to get down. And uh, I uh, I just picked a clean spot like on the top of a shelf and I jumped down to it. And I guess I was just high <laughs> enough up and the <laughs> and the, the wood was old and free enough to be rickety or rotten. I fell straight through that shelf into the next <laughs> shelf up to my like up to my chest and so my legs were dangling and my arms were above me and i was like suspended maybe 18 feet in the air on like the fourth out of like five maybe like the fifth out of like six shelves high i went totally through the sixth shelf into the fifth and embedded kind of like clark griswold and i was fucking physically stuck and i had to stay there like that for like 30 minutes until he came back to get something and saw me and i was like dean dean help i heard the door open up and he had to run in and figure out how to get me out of there he, he like he like pulled me loose but I was like suspended in the air, like 18, 20 feet up in the air with like just like fucking rusty saws and shit all around me. Like it's it's amazing I didn't fucking die. And uh, it's just just like a movie, completely stuck for a good half hour. I, I cried for a little bit. I laughed for a little bit. Like I went through all the emotions. I was like 16. Were you crying because you thought you might get more hurt? Like or I, just... I think I was crying because it was a Saturday morning and I thought, what if he doesn't come back? I'm going to die up here. <laughs> Your 127 hours moment is just stuck in the shelf. <laughs> Contemplating and I was just wedged in so fucking tight I couldn't get anywhere. It sucked. Wouldn't you just love to see a montage of all your greatest <laughs> falls and blunders like that? Yeah. Because, Jeff, I'm sure you would have... <laughs> I'm sure. I, you would have the best montage of anyone I've ever met. You fall and flip through the air and bounce so well. There's like an alternate reality where you're like a Jim Carrey level <laughs> physical comedian. I, 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 I say this uh, not to be braggadocious, but I assume I have forgotten about more falls and trips and blunders like that than most people have in a lifetime. <laughs> do you remember the one where we got an achievement in Gears 2 and then we, tr we tried to do a diving... <laughs> High five. No. <laughs> Onto the beanbag. But you... <laughs> we, I lost Gavin. Yeah. Oh, He's just dude. dying. We didn't hear what you, was, Gavin, but I no, what? what was the story? Uh, I, just, I didn't do it. Just it died out. <laughs> <laughs> you just like... It was like you walked away from the conversation. I basically did. But Jeff was focused so much on nailing the high five part that he... Completely overshot the beanbag. <laughs> <laughs> and something about Jeff's old living room floor, it was so loud. Whenever he fell on it, it was like an earth shattering <laughs> boom. I've got, like, I think two videos of uh, Jeff just falling in his living room. Like, one was that dive, <laughs> and the other one was like, uh, I can't remember what it was. We were just filming, I think it was the, the webcam of my laptop we were filming, and uh, you tried to hit me in the nuts at the beginning of the video. And then I tried to hit you in the nuts and you sort of went out of frame and you could just hear you <laughs> slam. It, it sounds like you slammed into the ground at like 45 miles an hour from, <laughs> from a standing position. I bet we can, uh, I bet I can trim those out and post them. Because, I, uh, uh, I don't like the half-ass things. Yeah, even though you don't see the fall in one of them, the noise is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> and then I think you said I, you slipped because you had your sockies on. <laughs> I would pay a premium for a loud floor. If every impact could just sound massive, I would pay so much money for that specific material. Like a, like a got... wrestling ring floor? Yeah, exactly. I'd love I bet that. you've got a great montage too, Andrew. Yeah, I have, I have a probably, yeah, I have a few. I have a few. It's just like, it's just Andrew Panton, the ankle sessions. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think mine would be a lot of mundane. Like you'd look at it and go, "That's what kept you out for two days." You're just stepping <laughs> off a curb. Like I, I think it would be great in a different way. 
I don't have anything that's comparable to being stuck in a literal shelf. I won. <laughs> I I one time was uh in it was when I was in the army. I was like, I was maybe nineteen, and we were we went to like if you lived in Fort Hood, if you went to Fort Hood, if you went to uh, if you were in the army, you went to Fort Hood. Uh, you would understand this, but you got the fuck out of Fort Hood every like the second you could every week. And so that's how I ended up falling in love with Austin was I would drive down to Austin just to go to bookstores or coffee shops after work and just spend as much time. Like I'd I'd get out of work at like five and I'd start driving to Austin and I'd come home at like two in the morning, go back to sleep and get up at five, like 5 a.m. to do PT and just get no sleep just to pretend like I didn't live in the army. Uh, But one time we were in, so we were, we'd go on weekend trips a lot. We went to San Antonio. It wasn't the trip that I told you guys about where I almost got run over by the train and then the, the scary car opened up all the doors. Mm. Uh, same dudes, same dudes, same city, different weekend. And we were walking around the um, the Riverwalk, which I really like because it's gross and touristy, but it's also where the chase scene in Cloak and Dagger happened, which is one of my favorite childhood mm. movies. Because I thought mm-hmm. Dabney Coleman was like the coolest fucking dude ever. And uh, so I, I love to go down there anytime I, anytime I get the opportunity. And uh, there was like a local TV crew filming... Uh, just people walking down. I don't know. They were doing like a tourism segment or something. And I thought I was going to be funny and do like a little like little like kick my leg and spin in the air and like point at the thing as I was walking by. And I started to do that. And I somehow tripped myself and kicked my own leg out from un- under me and fell <laughs> fucking off, like hard on the concrete next to the uh <laughs> next to the edge, <laughs> hit my head and rolled. Like I was probably like three feet from going over, <laughs> but I was like, I got like, I, I like hit so hard and was so disoriented that I almost fell in the fucking river walk and some local, <laughs> some, lo- some San Antonio like Fox affiliate probably still has that footage. <laughs> <laughs> I found a, I found a clip. Oh, oh did you really? <laughs> okay. Gavin is sharing a Vimeo link. Now this says eleven years ago, but I assure you it was uh, probably fifteen years ago actually that it was filmed. Everyone Set ready? Up at zero. Yeah. Yep. Three, two, one, play. Mine buffered. Got, got you an achievement. <laughs> mine, mine, mine is play. Mine's still buffering. <laughs> Suddenly, this my, video has had four we, people trying to watch it at the yeah. same time. <laughs> uh, it's working fine first. for me. Jeff just got me an achievement. Okay, here we go. What we get? We got for the fallen. All right, here we go. All the cog tags and gears are all one. There you go. It's an achievement I've been missing for about two years. <laughs> this is our celebration. <laughs> hey, I, I totally missed the beat back there. Yeah. <laughs> go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> it's so loud. It's so loud. Just the impact. <laughs> <laughs> the camera shakes. <laughs> well, it's like a, it was like an eighty-five-year-old pier and beam house, so it's uh, pretty, pretty loud. <laughs> yeah, I think that was two thousand and nine or two thousand and seven. God, we've, know, we've known each other for a very long time. We've been hanging out for a very long time. Yes, that's ridiculous. <laughs> so what? Still, what happened still never to the found future? anybody we liked more. I don't know if that's a good thing or bad. <laughs> Yeah, that must that must have been two thousand and nine. That's wild. Yeah. What happened to the woodshop guy, Jeff? Uh, I don't know. I I joined the army. He, I think he hired another high school student. It was like part of a work placement program, and okay. he was like, "Yeah, I know you're going in the army, but uh, are you thinking about going in the army?" But uh, he he thought I had a really. <laughs> I'll be honest. He thought I had a really good brain and I was really really smart and had a really good mind for fixing tools but that I was awkward and my hands were stupid. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I had the brain for it, but not the body for it or the dexterity. But he I was see. like, but you could, but we could get you there. And he was like, I really, I'd really like to, to like pass this. I don't have a kid. I'd really like to pass this down to you someday. And this could be your business. And I was like, that's really uh, humbling and gratifying and really sweet of you. But I want to go be a journalist. And I never saw him again. I think I, I think I went back and visited him once after basic training. He was still there, and then I went back like a year later, and he the the shop was gone. Have you considered that he's Jigsaw? You were the first <laughs> Jigsaw trap. <laughs> the way you described it, you trapped yourself. There's blades everywhere. It's rusty. Like what happened? That's why I'm asking. I'm concerned. You may be patient zero. The Jigsaw story, and you didn't even know it. That's entirely. I never considered that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like the only one who got away. Yeah. <laughs> Inspired an entire franchise. 
Well, I feel I feel uh I I, I uh I'm right up there with Carrie Ells and Chris Rock, mm-hmm. I guess. That's pretty fucking oh, exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Did you see the people are posting their Spotify end of year stuff? Yeah. And I guess in one of the Spotify UIs, when you come back to the app and your most recent podcast, it, it, it just says hello there. But if you've just listened to this podcast, it just says hello there. Face. <laughs> 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 Someone posted a I screenshot. that. I think that's it was really on our Instagram, but it was funny. <laughs> that's that. fucking great. That's fucking awesome. This podcast name continues to reward. Oh, oh man. Fantastic. I was I was talking about this with Ga- with uh, your Gavin. I was talking about this with uh, Gus and Eric yesterday. If we win that stupid Insight Award, mm-hmm. then I think that we have fulfilled the purpose of the podcast. To have somebody at an award ceremony where I hope there are like tables with tablecloths and people sitting around... Uh, looking up at a, at a dais and somebody has to stand up there and say award for best buddy podcast of 2022 <laughs> goes to f- face will be like I, I it's like we won we won the video oh. I don't know what else to do after that we need to consider I mean things are looking good currently I, I just pulled it up we currently have 78 percent of the vote the next person behind us is nine percent there's what like three days left Two days, 13 hours. We're also, it's funny, they have a section of their website that's most popular categories. Best buddy podcast is most voted on. I'm Hell assuming yeah. by a lot. So thank you so much <laughs> to all the listeners. Or comment yeah, thank leaders. you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, comment leavers. Thank you, regular We need listeners. to decide because the ceremony, I think, is in January. Ugh. We should send somebody on our behalf to accept the award. Who would we send? Who should we send? Greg? That's a tough one. Greg? <laughs> should we Greg? <laughs> should we send Jack? Should we send Jack? <laughs> Yeah, Jack's up there. <laughs> yes, Greg or Jack, right. someone. It's just something to consider because things are looking good. No one to jinx it, but do you know where the awards are? Person. I have no idea. I think Eric might have a better idea. I'm looking. I've been looking. I couldn't find where they're actually doing this thing. I wonder if it's just a virtual thing. Yeah, um, it might be. But you know, they, there's uh, a section of their site that's like we're having an in-person ceremony. When I was looking, here's. At it. Here's the thing that worries me, though. If you go to the bottom of the page, all uh-huh. Signal finalists are selected by the Signal Awards jury. Mm. Does that... Do you? Can't, mm, I don't know. It just... That's a thing that just makes me... Well, I think that just means the finalists. Like, we're all finalists, right? Like, they selected the finalists. Now the audience selects the winner. So I guess so. It just still makes me... Yeah, I, I know. Still no, they're, about it's, it. it's confusing. I've done a little bit of a deep dive into this i think what it is is there's the people signal awards and then there's the signal oh. awards, and i think those are two separate things i think we are undeniably going to win a people signal award but they may give the signal award to somebody like a different there's two awards essentially from uh, my I understanding see. of it so <sighs> I don't think we could be screwed over by the jury well don't be so sure. Gus told a story in the uh, that Anima podcast I did yesterday about how Roost Teeth got fucked out of an award. Uh, I can't remember if it was a Webby or a Streamy way, way, way back in the day. Really? Uh, they did something similar to this where uh, we uh, they let the audience vote. And then like <laughs> two days before voting ended, they locked down the voting and nobody else could vote anymore or see what the percentages were. And then when the awards were announced, suddenly <laughs> our competition won, even though we had been up by like thousands of votes. Huh. Yeah. It is so a wild move to do that while displaying the vote count, though. Yeah. That'd be insane. We'll see. We'll figure uh, it out. Speaking of, I did that. I mentioned that other podcast. Uh, we did that at the mall yesterday, which is back. And I bring that up because Eric is here. He can confirm. Eric, is the mall back or is the mall back? I I was talking to Nick about this because he's editing uh, that. Mm. And I confirmed with him. With the amount of background noise that we have throughout the entire show, uh, boy, the mall is back. Uh, we got there and sat at a food court that was mostly empty at 10, 15 a.m. By 11 a.m., that place was packed Grand on Central a Station. Monday morning. Yeah. Packed. Crazy. Crazy. It's back, baby. Now, I guess my question at this point would be, did the mall ever go away? Or oh, did yeah. you go away from the mall? Yeah, mall no, mall the mall went away hard. The dude. mall went away? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there was you, there was a decline in the mall from your viewing. 2000 to 2021, the mall did not exist. But what? is that the mall's fault or your fault? No, it's the mall's fault. Okay. I well, society's fault. took a break. 
Nah, it's yes. just like people people got into outdoor malls. People got into strip malls. People got into places like South Park Meadows and the Domain, and nobody went to indoor malls anymore. And they all, half of them across America closed because of it. It was a huge thing. Hmm. The uh, I I knew the mall was in trouble when I lived in New Jersey, <laughs> and the mall near me started to allow cigarettes in the mall. Like in '98, you could mm. walk around the mall and smoke cigarettes and just put them out on shit, and people started to. <laughs> and you were like, "Oh, I see where this is headed." Like they're going the they're doing anything to get people in the store. They're like fucking. They're like, smoke your cigarettes and put them out on the wall. We don't care. Just show up. And it was what did the mall do to there. get you back? What was the move? How did you realize the mall was back? Uh, well, it has nothing to do with the mall. Uh, it has to do with the fact that it was a cold, rainy day, and I wanted to get some exercise, and so uh, <laughs> I went to the mall because I thought it's indoors and it's big, so I could I could do a couple laps with the uh, with the old mall walkers. And imagine my surprise to find out that there were people in the and stores in the mall. It wasn't just a place for senior citizens to walk. <laughs> I don't know if the mall has ever existed where I live. What you're describing is just outside of like the, the holiday season when the mall is packed. I feel like it's just always old people. Do you have like a mall vague. in Nanaimo? Like an indoor oh, mall? Oh, oh, absolutely. We are Nanaimo is mall city. It it it's almost to a flaw. Like, the concept of attracting people to the town, the idea was, like, malls are the future. We have, like, four malls. Oh, my God. Four. How big is the nine moment It's not... It's, like, long, but it's not... I would say each mall is probably, like, ten minutes apart. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Do there's they just one, have the same shit in them? Uh, no, they don't. There's, like, one main central mall that is massive compared to the other ones, and the other ones, I'd say, are pretty tiny malls. Some don't even have a food court. Like, they pulled out the food court. It, it's not great. Not a great mall scene, but a lot of malls to choose from. What if they linked them underground through rail, like airport terminals? Now that would be fucking <laughs> awesome. I'm all about that. You could. It's a straight line. They're all they all line up perfectly. What do you mean it's a straight line? Everything's a straight line if you tunnel underground. <laughs> no, you have to zigzag. Not all tunnels are straight. What are you talking mean? about? You, you've never <laughs> taken a curve in a tunnel? Well, if I'm going around stuff, but what? what you got a lot of tunnels already? No, what are you talking about? What? I'm I'm saying. If you if you put a, a marker down right on one mall, yeah. If you shot if you shot a gun from one mall, it would go in the direction of the other malls, right? Like the, you, it would be per. They're lined up. They're perfectly. lined up is what he's saying. Yeah, it's a oh, straight well, shot. I'm saying it's convenient. Yeah, that's straight my point. line under all of them. Yeah, I get. Exactly. I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying even if they weren't all in a line, you could still put them together with straight lines. A Maybe not one straight, straight line. Though. Yeah, yeah. There'd, there'd be turns. If, if this, they weren't on the same... My point was how easy it would be, <laughs> God, Gavin. What a stupid conversation. <laughs> We're arguing Eric, about nothing here. <laughs> Eric chimed in to say, why would you shoot a gun? <laughs> I don't know. I was just... I was... Honestly, I was confused by what you were saying. It caught me off guard. I was trying to get my balance of just something that you can't turn. I have a question for Eric. And speaking of... Uh, well, stupid. Just stu <laughs> stupid. Stupid. <laughs> Uh, so our pizza videos came out. Yeah. One of them's called Eating the Plowman's Pizza. Yeah. One of them's called <laughs> Pizza Day. Pizza Day! And uh, that I think that one didn't didn't have a thumbnail. Who Who's in charge of, like, our YouTube st strategy? That's a great question. <laughs> I, th I think, I think Day? Gavin's... What that? Gavin's gunning for a promotion is what I'm hearing. That's... You know what? Jeff, you might be right. Gavin might be the one in charge of our YouTube strategy. I can get some meetings on your calendar and we'll get well, that going. I did Gavin's looking to, to take to on say, some... <laughs> I did have to slight the group to say, can we please have a thumbnail? <laughs> and wait, hey, logo. And you know what? That's the kind of initiative we need in the YouTube strategist position. <laughs> and that's why Absolutely. I'm nominating you for face YouTube strategist. <laughs> Gavin, you've been Literally here long 20 enough. 20 years into this company. <laughs> Don't have a you've thumbnail been here, for You've me. been here long enough to know that if you bring something up, suddenly it's your responsibility to get it fixed for whatever reason that is. So <laughs> why would you even do it? To be fair, uh, the, person, the person who typically makes our thumbnails is Brendan. Uh, yeah. in our content ops team, and he has been swamped and also was very sick. So, uh, fine, but YouTube automatically picks three frames <laughs> from a video. <laughs> Any one of those would have been better than just the black logo. Nah, I like the logo. Uh, okay. Nick swooped in, Nick swooped in and saved Thanks, the Nick. day. 
Yeah, because he is uh, an underrated <laughs> star of this like, podcast. <laughs> just looks like the both videos went up without any knowledge of each other. Like one's called <laughs> eating the plumber's pizza. The other one could yeah. have been making the plumber's pizza. <laughs> Right, pizza but it's day. pizza. But it's pizza, pizza day. <laughs> it is right. pizza, pizza day. Yeah, yeah pizza day. <laughs> that was the day we ate pizza. And it's, it's two videos uploaded. Uh-huh. What minutes apart? Thirty minutes the apart. Same, <laughs> the same thing. Thirty minutes apart. <laughs> we, 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 we're terrible. While we're, we're terrible on, at video. While we're listening to Gavin complain, can I add uh-huh. on one <laughs> little thing? Oh, absolutely. The, uh, what do you want your new job responsibility to be? Go. I just don't. I just. Well, never mind. I'm good. <laughs> I, just, all right, no, all right, no, I gotta say, I gotta say it. The bathroom waffles video came out today. Yep. Thought it was that's the if you if you don't know uh-huh. it's uh, the regulation animation. I was mm-hmm. gonna do a whole spiel about them today, but mm-hmm. I was and how people should watch them. But then I was listening to the most recent release, and I just mm-hmm. picked a random spot to pop into, and it was me talking, trying to s- t- send these up and trying to get people to watch them. So I guess I've already done that. So I'm not gonna beat you guys to death with it. But uh, the bathroom waffles regulation animation came out today, which is if you want to know where the genesis of waffles in face it's there uh so i would highly recommend watching it um very good it it just seemed to cut off in the middle of the episode at the end and just get like a hard cut into uh an outro for i don't know some rt shit which is fine but i just didn't know if it if it was supposed to cut off that hard or if that was an (laughs) oopsie no i does it do that it did when i watched it does anyone (laughs) watch the final export Oh, that's a great question. Something a YouTube strategist probably would do. Yep, it does. It <laughs> I'm just gonna cuts I'm, off. It just cuts oh off a little, a little, a little abruptly, right? I just thought that was odd, and uh, I was gonna bring it up to you, but then I, then after Gavin started, I don't know if I can. Oh, I think that's but, but now the, I, I think that's just the end of the bit. Just the end. It, okay. It just hard. It just hard. Just cuts a hard cut. Okay. Okay. Yep. But now instead of Eric talking yep. at the end of the episode, oh, oh, I didn't. Oh, Gavin, Gavin. We now have just, just other oh. people who aren't on face. Yep. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> Do well, you love it? Do you my love notes. it? <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> I will. I, for, I every, for every good thing we could do on this show, there are just so many things to drag it back down into the mud. <laughs> 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 Regardless this? of how much we put into it. How about this? I proof all the audio, right? I uh-huh. always do that every week. Give me the, give me the video too. I'll do you it. You got it. I will. Oh. I'll have them send you the video. I'm totally fine with that. I'm fine. I'm happy to do it. Okay. Okay. I'll let them know. So I, I just want our content to feel like we made oh. it. Oh, <laughs> oh, Gavin. I completely. I think it understand. kind of does. I think that's part of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, maybe a little too much. <laughs> maybe it feels like somebody at one level above us made it. Uh, maybe that's what we should be shooting for. So anyone hey, else in the company? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm checking my notes uh, for stuff I want to talk about today. And I, have, I don't have a ton. I have a little bit. But I have a note I don't understand. And I was Ooh, wondering if, if, if this will trigger if this will trigger something to you guys. And maybe Andrew specifically. Okay. Um, I have a section about asparagus and pee and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had some, by the way, I, had, I ate a shitload of asparagus last night <laughs> to get an update. <laughs> um <laughs> And in my notes, like I have, I have a uh, NEP updates, P saga, ate a bunch of normal asparagus last night and no smell at all. These are my notes. And then I have an idea about us trying to create the worst smelling pea ever. And then I have a note that just says, just had a whole bucket of asparagus, Andrew said. What does that what? mean? Oh, Andrew had, pu- I had asparagus? No. Did you have a bucket of asparagus? No. no. <laughs> I haven't eaten asparagus since we've last recorded. I don't know what that note means. That I don't know what be. I was trying to convey there. It just just Andrew had a whole bucket said. of asparagus. Dash Andrew said, "Here, <laughs> I'm gonna take a screenshot of it." It's I so feel fucking like weird. This has to be two separate things that you've accidentally linked together. Maybe because I haven't held a bucket in in the time between. Never mind. I sticks. know. I don't know if it was like something like I'm referencing something from an episode. That I don't remember that you guys do or something or just like I just don't it, you've so your knowledge no buckets no asparagus no buckets no asparagus God that makes it even more confusing for me yeah that's, Andrew that's a confusing said note. here it is here's my note I put it up in Slack thank God it was okay. powerful enough NEP update what if an, uh... under yeah <laughs> like, I was looking at my notes today. Idiot. Oh, I can go through them. Inflatable. Uh, the first note is inflatable. I think I. everybody in Austin has a fucking, I assume all over the world, has Christmas inflatables, you know, like 
snowmen and Santa Claus, and there's a bunch of like elf and oh. Clark Griswolds and stuff. <laughs> and I was thinking it'd be funny to have like a f face inflatable, like if it was Ian or I don't know something else. Because apparently they're easy to make because they're licensed out the fucking asshole. Everybody, everybody mm. in my neighborhood has some sort of property on their front lawn inflated. And I was thinking maybe next year we should try to have some sort of flood place Christmas inflatable. Ooh. Then I wrote underwater hand hockey because I watched that Chris Hemsworth show where he like is trying to live longer or whatever. And there was an episode <laughs> where he was trying to hold his breath better. And he played a game of hockey underwater against another team. And they had hockey sticks and a puck, but it was all played on the bottom of the pool. And I thought that was kind of cool <laughs> and that we should consider that. I thought we should consider that for our, our alternative sports podcast. <laughs> Why if hockey like didn't have a, yeah it's like hockey didn't have enough barriers of entry already yeah. like let's make this more accessible everybody underwater we're yeah. all gonna be underwater and play this sport and you gotta hold your <laughs> yeah it's episode if you want to see it in action it's episode three but apparently it's like a whole sport so I kind of wanted to look into it and I wanted to see if you guys have ever heard of underwater hand hockey before no <laughs> uh, and by the way I'm calling it underwater hand hockey because that's what it looks like to me I don't know okay. if it's got a better name but it's a bunch oh. of dudes a full hockey team underwater in speedos <laughs> holding their breath sh uh, slamming a puck uh, on the bottom of a pool i was against special this puck? effort <laughs> i guess i don't know that wasn't the point of the episode the point of the episode was he was trying to fast and <laughs> catch his food so he's having to learn how to hold his breath longer so he could spear fish or some shit i don't know i guess fucking i'm now on board <laughs> Thor. after thinking about this this is the premise of like that the penalty boxes you just have to be on the surface you just have to like be not underwater <laughs> is great you i want to see underwater fights like this is you have to dog paddle for three for minutes before you can get back <laughs> Then I wrote. Fights. Then I wrote. Just had a whole bucket of asparagus. Dash Andrew said, and I just don't know what that is. Then any pee updates? I was just wondering if anybody ate any asparagus, and if you did, did you get any updates or, or smelled any particularly strong coffee? Has anybody noticed any pee <laughs> smells lately? <laughs> no. Asking. Uh, no. I'm just. I'm still processing. I don't think asparagus is an appetizing food. Like oh, I, I enjoy so it. Good. Great. It's no. So good. It, it, yeah. It's good to enjoy it, but I don't think it's like a food that people would get super excited about. I don't think it's like, like no one craves it in that way. Yeah, like it's mm. not like ever, anyone's like, wow, this fucking is, I'm so excited for this asparagus. This is going to be like the star of the dish. It's not an appetizing food in that sense. And serving it in a bucket has to be the least appealing mechanism. I don't There's know. There's something disgusting. About <laughs> I don't I don't understand. <laughs> bucket Where of that asparagus. Came from. Like that. I wrote that. I just don't know what it means. Or what I'm That'd be psychotic. Uh, smell like a KFC bucket of asparagus. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I will say I ate. Emily made asparagus last night, and she put it in the air fryer, and she she melted some Parmesan cheese on it. Holy fucking shit, was that good? I ate so much of it because I wanted to see if I could blast my fucking pee smell out, <laughs> and I nothing, nothing, just like the most bog standard huh, piss smell wow. ever. But. But it, it's fur, it furthered now when the cheese it furthered uh, it was furthering the experiment. I last time I I had the bad smell from organic asparagus. Right, this is just like bog standard H E B ah. asparagus. So I am think I'm thinking there is something to asparagus versus like traditional store like traditionally okay. available. So uh, I'm gonna go back to try to find some organic now and do it again and see if I can blast out the smell. And if I can. That cr gets me to my next point on this list, which is, can we create the worst smelling piss ever? If you like fully ingest like a ton of super strong coffee and a ton of organic asparagus and other stuff that's supposed to make your pee smell. I know we looked some stuff up and you just try to like ingest only that stuff and then hold your pee for as long as you can. Can you unleash like the stinkiest piss on earth? What would we have and to do? Have a, a, a judge that's smelling three cups yeah, of piss? No, I, oh, this Who is Who are we going to be able to get to do this? I think, you can, I think you can self-judge. I think you can tell like, oh my God, this is the worst smelling pee I've ever had. And I then if so, <laughs> if so, we should take it on the road and we should go to like the Alamo <laughs> Draft House or go to like some place oh. where people pee a lot and then piss in a place and see if anybody is like, oh my God. Like, let's see. Like, that's the ultimate. If you can make a pee smell so bad in public that a stranger comments on it. I don't think I don't, a stranger would ever comment on a piss yeah, smell. I, I, I think they I, might. I certainly wouldn't. I think if it's hideous enough, I think they would. No. I mean, they're in a. Yeah. In a I'd like. To, I mean, I'd like to get there. I'd like to try it. I'd like to smell. I, I'd like to cur curate a urine smell so strong uh, <laughs> of coffee and asparagus and other things we don't even know I don't, yet. <laughs> I don't know. That it's like it's unavoidable. Like people can't walk in. They're like, oh my god, 
I can't handle this. Like it was making my I, eyes water the other day when I had that asparagus pee. I would assume that the it wouldn't combine. I think just one of the things would overpower the other. I don't think I have a sophisticated enough nose to distinguish what percentage was coffee as opposed to asparagus. I think it's just going to add. Assume the asparagus I think it would win. I think it's just going to add to the smell. Like if you took a stinky dead dog and you threw it on a pile of garbage, <laughs> what? you wouldn't be able to <laughs> tell the difference between what? the two stinks. It would what? just create a greater stink. <laughs> I thought I had worst example locked up with firing a gun off of a building, but you just <laughs> threw a dead dog randomly. You ever smell a dead dog, dude? No, <laughs> no, no, I haven't. Oh God, I grew up in Alabama. There are dead dogs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were. They, <laughs> why? There are so many dead dogs in Alabama. Just they on just the side like, of the road and shit. People hit them, and then they just like. Well, people, and they like in the summer. They would get bloated, like with gases oh, and stuff, and then like kids in my school would throw rocks no. at them and try to pop them, no. and then like a dog would explode with like maggots and stuff. And it's a hideous Christ. fucking smell. It's a hideous smell. There are oh, like my big God. windows of your life that whenever you start telling a story from, I, I like brace oh. myself. <laughs> oh. You guys have never seen a dead, a bloated dead dog on the side no. of the road, and no. a couple of kids from your school chucked rocks at it till they hit no. it to make it pop. Oh no. Yeah. no! I never went on a dog popping spree. I, well, I didn't say I'd ever done it. I just said I've seen it done. <laughs> oh my god! You just watched it. I've never kicked a duck, but I saw a kid do it at the fucking <laughs> at the. Uh, <laughs> I saw a kid do it at the what? bus stop one time. Like, <laughs> why do people in Alabama hate animals? And why was a duck waiting? Well, for <laughs> that was in Florida. The duck oh. had business to attend to. Now we, I lived like uh, next to a bunch of ponds and shit, and so there were always ducks around. <laughs> <laughs> Eric or FTK Florida, Florida duck, duck dick. Dick. <laughs> That's what I that's it was at that bus stop that I saw my first duck dick. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever seen a duck's dick before? <laughs> no. No I haven't, Jeff. You should look it up. <laughs> No, I'm good. Cool. You should look up a duck's no, dick. I'm, I'm oh, is that the corkscrew one? Oh, yeah, is that it, looks like a, what am I it looks like a corkscrew. Oh, I've heard oh, of it's that. A, the razor one? It's like oh. fucking, it's like they're horrible. There you go. I'm not going to Google that. <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah, 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 don't worry about it. Uh, no need to. When you um, when you said there you go, I had legitimate fear you're about to drop a photo in the Discord. Uh, yeah, I, I, found, I, found, I, found, I found one. Do, do you think you could pop a dog with a duck dick? I, I like as a, <laughs> if you could use it as like a as a whip maybe they're like long corkscrews they're really weird <laughs> anyway <laughs> are are you okay I'm lightheaded I know the are you no Jeff are you all right what <laughs> <laughs> what what do you mean am I all right of course I I'm had fine. to change the title for this episode for to beat Jeff's head dogs and duck dicks like what's going on. What happened here? Stop! That's oh, a duck. That's it. what a duck's dick looks like. <laughs> what? They're fucking weird. It looks like oh, I hate it. It's yeah, like they're, the they're worst for, they're fused fucking, to start a mission. That's why you don't want to stop posting duck dicks, dude. That's why, that's why you don't. That's why. That's why I remember what a duck's dick looks like because I saw what? one at the bus stop. <laughs> why was it cock out? Because I was banging another duck. Was <laughs> this show better what? win an award? <laughs> we can't win an award with this. <laughs> yeah, what's Jack going to say about the preview? <laughs> anyway. Anyway, oh, I think we should try oh. to make the worst smelling piss. Oh. <laughs> okay. That yeah, was... I think it would be funny. Oh. And... Uh, oh. <laughs> Not, if you next note, what if Andrew said it was one of us? That got me thinking. We still don't know who the mole is, who was who the pickle mole is, who was going around Austin taking pictures of the pickle because Andrew hasn't told us yet. He had a prime. You had a prime moment because I don't, at no point did I consider that it was Nick, Eric, or Gavin really. But you could have you could have totally you could have totally created so much paranoia in that moment if you would have been just if you would have just said I'm not going to tell you who it is, but uh. They're they're on the Discord right now, and if they want to come forward, they can. And we would have eaten each other apart. Well, I don't want to. We talked about this. I'm honestly surprised they haven't talked to you already about it. No. We we also talked about the fact that Andrew didn't for a second think that we wouldn't believe Ridiculous. that he was in Austin. Yeah. Ridiculous. So is that on top of the fact that 
now that you know I've said I, I wasn't, uh, I, I'm not going to just reveal the person unless they're okay with it. Because what haven't. about if you reveal the person, I'll reveal the name of that number. What number? So oh. 70, 67 or whatever. Yeah, no, the fact that I didn't remember what you're talking about at all, I don't care. It's fine. You pretend not to care, but you do care. Yeah, you yeah, care. I forgot though, so I'll probably forget again. Doesn't matter. We'll remind. I will you. care for the it next two days. No, I can't. Well, it's weird because they said they they were gonna tell, and then they didn't. So I, hmm. they haven't responded to me. Uh, also, so I, I wrote down, I want the bussy bus. It got me thinking. I was thinking about the tuxedo that we have and how we had that whole idea to do Ripken's Believe It Because Why Not Traveling Museum, and we were going to do it for the live show that fell through. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wouldn't it be awesome if that bus still existed and we mm -hmm. could buy that bus and then convert it into a mobile museum? <laughs> like the bus... Like if like is is it how Perfect. do we how do we find out if the bussy bus is still on this earth? We could figure that out. I assume even if it's just a the... shell, we could put an engine in it and get it roadworthy again. We could restore it and turn it into the mobile <laughs> face museum with which we have all of our uh, oddities. Because I've and never the, been to a museum yeah. where the building itself is one of the exhibits. Exactly. Mm. That's a great point. Exactly. I don't just, know. I don't know how to do it, Andrew. I'm gonna have to rely on your expertise, knowing more about Bussy than we do. Can you do some research to see if we can figure oh, out yeah. who to talk to? I'll look to, into it to find out. I'm sure they're not still using it. Although if they were, that'd be even better. We could just. My, buy, I would pay it out of pocket for that bus, no matter like no matter what. It costs. <laughs> My fear is we're gonna learn that that's like the bus that was into the wild. Like that bus is just in Alaska in the middle of the wilderness. Like it's, we're going to find it, but it's going to be impossible to retrieve in it. <laughs> they had to, well, that actually uh, w would be easy because they had to, they had to actually go and remove that bus because people kept oh, dying really? out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone oh, it's now. It's terrible. Yeah. People kept dumbasses kept going out there and getting trapped Ugh. and having to get rescued or dying. And so they finally had to go helicopter the bus out. What oh a complete God. misunderstanding of that story. I feel yeah. like if that story conveys anything, it's don't do this. Yeah, you don't go die. to the bus. Yeah. Well, it's like that, that bit of old crane in, at Chernobyl, like the deadliest item on the planet, and people still go and try and find it. They had to, like, chuck it in the woods. Yeah. Wait, what? A crane it was like a Chernobyl? It was like a crane arm that they were using to, like, pick up all the radioactive graphite and stuff from Chernobyl, oh. I think. But it became... The, it, became basically the most radioactive item on the planet <laughs> and people just want to go and see it <laughs> <laughs> i don't i mean there's so many layers to that i don't that's such an odd why speaking of dying i while we were talking about uh, underwater hand hockey i just googled water polo and the uh -huh. first thing that came up was f fatality rate and under it it says water polo oh was the only female sport to rank among the deadliest sports with a 42 oh 0. 0.42 fatality rate per 100,000 participants. Oh that. Okay. Is that really is that I high? Get, 0. I, 0.42 or is that 42? I think 42 per 100,000 would be completely deadly. Yeah. Yeah, that's the crane. Yeah, world's most deadly crane. There you go. I don't oh. want to go and see that. <laughs> I want nothing no. to do with that. Well, I'm happy Once to look again. at the photo. That could be next door. I'm not going to go see it. I don't <laughs> need to see that. Look at these. If it was next shits. door, you probably would yeah. want to move away from it. Those dudes are fucking dead, right? Oh, they must be. We got checking his fucking phone standing next to it. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, play sports, water polo. Four, did you, so it's 42 or 4.2? I can't 4. tell because it's in like the weird Google. Can you not tell because there. it's on your clock is how it's displayed? The number? <laughs> Oh, it says point four. It says point four two. Yeah, that doesn't seem. Okay. That's like what one in almost two hundred thousand people. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't. When I think of like people dying in sports, it's not super common across mainstream sports. I guess that's true. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone dying in baseball. I mean, boxing is what comes to mind of people dying. Football uh, has rugby. Anyone died playing baseball. I mean, I f I feel like statistically it probably. Oh happens. shit. Uh, oh, Ray Chapman, uh, was hit in the head by a pit. Oh fuck, where'd it go? Uh, death. 
On August 16, 1920, Ray Chapman was struck in the head and killed by a pitch thrown by Carl Mays during a game against the New York Yankees. At the time, pitchers commonly dirtied balls with soil, licorice, and tobacco juice and scuffed, <laughs> oh sandpapered, scarred, cut, or spiked them, giving a misshapen, earth-colored ball that traveled through the air erratically, tended to soften in the later innings, and as it came to the plate, it was very hard to see. He threw a submarine delivery, and it was late in the afternoon. Eyewitnesses recounted that Chapman did not react to the pitch at all, presumably unable to see it. The sound of the ball striking his skull was so loud. Oh, my God. He thought it had hit the end of the bat, uh, and he fielded the ball and oh. threw it to first base. God. Home plate umpire Tommy Connolly, noticing that Chapman was bleeding from his left ear, screamed toward the stands for a doctor. Uh, Tris Speaker, who'd been on deck, rushed to Chapman as did several players from each team. Uh, they, uh, he tried to walk, but his knees buckled. As he was helped off the field by his teammates, he mumbled, I'm all right. Tell him not to worry. Ring. <laughs> Katie's ring. <laughs> he said, I'm all right. Tell Mays not to worry. Dot, 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 ring. Dot, dot, dot. Katie's ring. Before falling unconscious. He was taken to a hospital uh, where he died at 440 in the morning from brain damage. His Jeez. pregnant wife. Oh my God! He had a pregnant wife. That must be that must be Katie. Yeah. Oh, that's so sad. That's that terrible. Tragic. Yeah. Can I? And I not to make light of the situation, but you're about to. No, no. I'm just curious. I mean, I assume they called the game. You can't continue playing after it did. that. Wow. Well, did if he, if he died later, they might have just. Well, okay. So let's say he didn't. Do they just put somebody on first? Because that wasn't an out. Like, throwing the first, like, because you hit, you, you get given the base, right? It doesn't say. Like, what's the rule for that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a Like, great somebody question. died, and I just know there's somebody in the stands that's like, this is fucking bullshit. We should have a guy on first right now. The, well, the bases they should be moved. I mean, they didn't know he was dying, right? Like, they just took him off the field to the hospital, so they probably just Yeah, that's what I'm play. saying. It might have just been, like, an injury, and then, or well, treated I like an injury, I mean. I feel like a guy passing out with blood coming out of his ear is pretty alarming, regardless of... Sure. I, I think the assumption wouldn't be that things are going to be great. Th they don't stop playing when some kid gets hit by a foul ball in baseball and gets his head split open. They got to carry him out. They, they, you know, like the game continues. And that happens like once a season, I feel like, like that's different, season, though, because that's, like. they're not an active player. Yeah. Uh, a Padres pitcher got hit in the face by an Albert Pujols line drive. It, like, hit him in the head, and, like, the game stopped, and everyone, like, gathered around and prayed because it was Jesus. bad, bad. Uh, they took him out of the game. The game continued, which is, I mean, I guess what you're asking. They just, you know, you put another pitcher in, and the game continues from 2008, I think. Uh, but that guy who got hit in the face is now the general manager of the Rangers, and that's... So I guess you can just kind of keep being in baseball as long as you don't die from getting hit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, and you take you take special precautions too. Maybe like didn't, didn't John Olerud wear a helmet when he bat when, like when he fielded because he had some sort of a brain issue, and so he wore he wore like a batter's helmet anytime he played baseball, even if he was like I don't know I don't know what position John Olerud played third base. There have have you guys seen, first base? Uh, he was first base. Alex Torres was a pitcher for the Padres. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wore it for oh, the no. Mets also. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> what? Okay. Is that a helmet Why? with a hat on? It's a hat. <laughs> helmet hat? It's a hat that is supposed <laughs> if you get, if a ball comes back at you, it's going to hit. <laughs> you know in a video game when you like pick up an item and it, yeah. and it like shrinks down? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like Mario halfway through picking yeah, up a wing cap. I, I, no. I know it looks photoshopped. It's not. That was what he wore. As a pitcher, he wore a protective hat. Uh, I like it. That, I, I think, is actually... I think that's great. Yeah, <laughs> that's I'm phenomenal. a big fan of this. I'm not making fun of that. That's genius. Not at all. It's stylish. <laughs> you can just wear that around. I'm sorry. It's stylish? That's You can't tell me that that ain't style. I'm not saying it's great style, but that's a definite style. It just looks like every picture of him is... His hat is closer to the camera than he is. See, I'm I'm personally excited about this because it looks like a hat I could actually wear, which is very oh. rare. This is an exciting thing for me. Have we found you a hat yet, Andrew? No, but next we should wrap this up. 
after talking about dead dogs and people getting murdered, everyone's favorite comedy podcast. Um, I have a photo to show, Gavin, of uh, my, my big head dilemma. Okay. I can't wait. Should we wrap this up? Yeah. Uh, wh- I mean, if you guys want to let it go for about five more minutes, that'd be fine. I got to I gotta, uh, I gotta stop down between recordings to go get Millie from school. So I'm trying but to why would us thing. continuing five more minutes yeah, it impact that sense. at all? You just, well, you because we give we give the go. audience more content, and then uh, it'll be time <laughs> at that point for me to go get her. And I'll, I'll, otherwise, I got five minutes to kill before I need to leave to go get her. I'd rather spend. Well, it I, I was going to use this between time to eat lunch. <laughs> Don't do it. But that's another yeah, thing too. It would diminish. It would diminish the between time, so Gavin can't eat. No, you know what? Maybe Gavin's going to eat a bunch of asparagus. This could be important He's research. Not. Nobody, none of you are going to eat asparagus. It's just I me. love asparagus. Just Nobody else been wants in the to rotation. Try. I'll do the asparagus challenge. Yeah, I mean, I'm we're not at all opposed to this. I think we're also going to chug soda from a gurpler this episode. Oh yeah, yeah we talked about that too. Uh, well, I, I assume also you didn't have your gurpler. I okay. also. Well, that's a fucking big surprise there. I also uh, I have the <laughs> apple. I think we'll break that out next episode. It's been over it's a time. year. It's yeah. time. It's been a year. The Cosmic Crisp Apple will come out. <sighs> Still don't have a new fridge, which is great. It looks real gross. So I definitely I definitely don't it's think I had the fridge for that apple. No. I might try again. I think also well, we'll cover it next episode. Oh, we should wrap he, this one up. Why, no, why can't Jeff, you just Jeff leave Jeff is early? successfully just filling time. Look at him. Look at the way he works. I don't think this is successful in filling Do time. Do you guys think... <laughs> How, let me let me ask you a question. How long do you guys think you could eat the same thing and only that thing every day before you get you've had to eat something else? Uh, now, a couple weeks. Jean, like, what about foods that you can rotate the topics on, like pizza? No, I, I mean, I mean, it's like it's like pizza? yeah, it's like the same thing. Like, you go get a Red Baron pepperoni pizza, and you only eat a Red Baron pepperoni pizza. Or you eat cheese enchiladas from your favorite Mexican restaurant. Or you eat Captain Crunch with milk. It's like the exact same item. And you I mean, I, I would definitely be fed up after a couple of weeks. But I mean, I feel like I could do it indefinitely. Yeah. Like, Andrew, he spent a month eating chicken dinners. Chicken. I'm assuming there was some variety in how the chicken was prepared. But like, if it was like McDonald's chicken McNuggets, and you could only eat McDonald's chicken nugget, McNuggets, like, how no. long do you think you could go before you had to quit? Like, if we had a contest, we're not going to do this. I'm just curious. Yeah, nuggets, it would not be super long because there's such a range of good being good or bad. Like, it's temperature based for me when it comes to McDonald's chicken nuggets. I think I could have pepperoni pizza every day for like two months and not really think about it. But wouldn't you drop dead? No. No. I guess you might want to be strategic about what it is you're eating just for uh, uh, vitamin and uh, nourishment uh, yeah. input. But I, I think, guess I was thinking purely taste. I think I could do. I think I could eat the same thing every day for a year. Like if I only ate, I don't know, Big Macs from January first to December thirty first of twenty twenty three. I think I could do that. I'm not gonna do it, but I think I could do it. I, I think really, I could do a year. You think the Big Mac? I don't. I'm not a fan of the Big Mac. I think the Big Mac. I, I wouldn't be after long, but. I am currently. I, I finally figured out how to not get a Big Mac. What do you get? Because I feel like I always, I always crave a Big Mac. If I really? see McDonald's, I'm like, ooh, could go for that. But now I, I'm, I'm successfully able to pull the memory of what it feels like to have just finished a Big Mac, and how shitty and like rank it feels. And I just remember that now before I eat one, and I don't want to eat it anymore. I think a I, Big Mac is the worst burger at McDonald's. Oh, oh no, you're crazy. It's, it's fine. I think that I'm over secret sauce. Uh, like it's whatever, but it doesn't appeal to me anymore. I've replaced the Big Mac with just two cheeseburgers, just two bog standard McDonald's cheeseburgers, mm-hmm. and that's it's this. I find I enjoy that more. I feel like sucking down the first third of a Big Mac is one of the best things you can eat. Nah, yeah, it's I, I think a quarter pounder is way better. Way yeah, better. We, we fell for Jeff's trap. It's well, not there you have trap. it. I mean, he fit. <laughs> God damn it, Jeff! You've listened to another episode of the. <laughs> face podcast thanks for t- uh, hanging in there with us sorry things got a little bit weird but you know how andrew gets with his duck dicks and his exploding dogs and stuff so uh hopefully you'll tune in next week when we do this all again i hear that jeff might eat an apple that's a year and five days <laughs> there's old. there's no way you're eating that there's a zero percent chance eat it? what are you talking about what i'm supposed what to eat it s- aren't i no i don't think well yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. wasn't that the uh-huh. point all right yeah see you guys next time good? next week yep Bye. My headphones cut out. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs>
I'll tell you what happened. I fucking won. I got that. Hey guys, Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of F Face. Andrew had the biggest baby skull. Jeff tries the cosmic crisp. Don't mix up Liam Neeson and Leslie Nielsen. Mmm, moon pie. Let's get paranoid in 2023. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of F Face. <laughs>